Here's your word for the day from Calvary in Lake Havasu. Visit us on the web at calvaryaz.com. Good morning, Calvary. I'm Pastor Pete, and I have a question for you this morning. Um, have you ever been betrayed? You know, maybe a friend or a family member stabbed you in the back, said something about you that, they, that you had told them in confidence. Maybe you have a coworker who's actively working against you, and you just feel betrayed. Jesus can identify with that experience. We're picking up the story of Jesus praying in the Garden of Gethsemane uh, before he was crucified. And while he is praying, a mob of people come to arrest him, carrying swords and carrying clubs. And they are led by none other than one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot. And Judas comes up and doesn't just point out Jesus. He comes up and he kisses Jesus just to make the intimacy of the relationship even more apparent that he was turning in his friend who he had been following. And Jesus even calls him friend and says, friend, do what you've come to do. And of course, the crowd who was there to arrest Jesus grabs Jesus. They're ready to drag him off. One of the disciples, Peter, grabs a sword and cuts off the ear of one of the people in the crowd. Now, that just goes to show you he was probably a better fisherman than he was a soldier, but um, he resorted to violence to try and save Jesus. So you can feel this is a chaotic moment. Jesus has been betrayed by one of his followers and uh, his other follower is trying to do his best to protect Jesus. And this is what Jesus says. I'm in Matthew 26, starting in verse 52. Then Jesus said to him, put your sword back into its place, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot appeal to my father and he will at once send me more than 12 legions of angels? But how then should the scriptures be fulfilled that it must be so? At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to capture me? Day after day, I sat in the temple teaching and you did not seize me. But all this has taken place that the scriptures of the prophets might be fulfilled. And then all the disciples left him and fled. So as Jesus responds to this moment of betrayal, we learn a couple of things. First, we learn that Jesus is the commander of angel armies, right? He has a host of angels that he can call down to do his bidding. So that helps us to know that he wasn't out of control in this moment. He wasn't just a victim in this moment. He was actually willingly walking down this road of being betrayed and being arrested. I think for us, it encourages us to remember that no matter what hardship we're going through, if Jesus wants to pull us out of that hardship, he has the angel armies and he's able to do that. And sometimes he will. Sometimes he'll rescue us out of a difficult time, but sometimes he'll leave us there. And that shouldn't cause us to doubt or wonder about his goodness or his power to help us. The next thing that I see in this passage is that Jesus was innocent, right? He, he said, why are you coming after me like I'm a robber? You know, you know I'm not a robber. Jesus was innocent. He did nothing wrong, yet he endured this abuse. He endured this suffering for us who are guilty. He endured that suffering for us who have done things that are wrong. And he did it so that we could be forgiven and we could experience the grace of God. And then the next thing we see here is that this was God's plan and Jesus was willing to walk that road because the crucifixion of Christ, his death, his burial, and his resurrection was the plan from the beginning. And he was willing to be an obedient servant to show his love for the Father and to show his love for us in walking this road, being betrayed, suffering, dying for our sins and rising again so he could give us new life. So Calvary, I hope that this encourages you today. Remember, Jesus has the power to help you. Remember that Jesus was innocent, a perfect sacrifice when we are imperfect. And remember 
that this plan was a plan of salvation just for you. Have a blessed day, Calvary.